Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I want to quickly show you how to use printf to format a table. Now, here's the table I want to print out using printf. As you can see, it just lists the Java primitive types. The very first column is left justified with 10 characters, the next eight characters, and the last, well, it displays a digit, and it's four spaces wide. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to open up a J shell compiler, something to help us do some coding online. And, you know, I'm just going to start off by doing system.out.println, printf. And I'm not going to do anything other than just a bunch of dashes in this first line. I mean, there's no point in getting overly created for the title here. Just print out Java primitive types. I don't know that I spell that correctly. I don't know, that's a good start. I can just click run and you can see that just kind of prints off the heading. It does throw everything on the same line. That's no good. So I may as well throw in a percentage n inside of the printf string and then run it. And you'll notice that the percentage n works like a slash n that'll give you a carriage return. So we've got a nice title there. That's getting us closer to where we wanna be, but we do have to kind of do some formatting here. I wanna take care of the title right now, category name bits. And the way that I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use some formatting. And so I'm gonna say system.out.printf and I'm going to throw in a pipeline first. That's the left padding, a space, and then say, you know what? The first column is going to be left justified and 10 characters wide. And then after that, I'm going to have some padding, another pipeline, and move to the next one. Now, just to let you know, percentage minus 10, that 10 is 10 characters wide, minus is left justified. S is we're going to be formatting a string. The next column is going to be eight columns wide left justified with a string. And then the final one was well, normally going to be a digit, but for this first title, it's actually going to be a string. So we add that in, do the percentage N to do a new line, and then we just put strings in here. We want category, name, and then bits. And there we go. Life is good. I think we can run this. And boom, we've got a nice little application working there. Now it looks like I could do some formatting here and maybe add another dash or two. <laughs> we'll worry about that just a, a little bit later, but I think that gets us closer to where we wanna be. Geez, now I've got too many dashes. Oh, I could do this all day, but you're not, you're not paying me to, to format that title there. Now it's gonna get a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna throw another set of dashes underneath here to make it look like the output that we're going for. And then I'm going to take this same printf line, move it down here. But here's the problem. The first entry is going to be double, or no, it's going to be floating, right? Because a, a double is a floating point number. Its name is double, and I believe it is 64 bits wide, but this is not a string. Boom, boom, right? That is actually going to be a number. And right now this says we're gonna have four S's there. Well, if I run this, well, it's not gonna give an S about that type of code. It's not gonna like it at all. Oh, actually, look at that. It did do the conversion for me. I thought it wouldn't work. Regardless, uh, we shouldn't do that. We should say D to run that as a decimal. Okay, and it did a conversion for me, so I'm happy with that. Learned something new there. Um, also, notice it just says 64. If you want zero padding, you can throw in zero four, and notice that that adds some padding in there. So that makes me get a bit closer to where I want to be, floating double zero six four. And it's kind of following that type of a pattern right there. Now, if you wanted to, you could just give up and put the bottom line in there and you could say, hey, we're done. We just printed out a table, um, but that would be boring. Why don't we actually just finish this off and I'll throw in one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's double and there's float. And then there's the integral. How do you spell integral? Integral types. And there's long int short and byte. 
And then finally, there is the char and the boolean. And by the way, char is actually an integral number. It can actually take on the numbers from zero to nine. Uh, and be added together, so it's kind of interesting. Um, but Boolean is just a Boolean value, and we'll say Boolean there. Let's get these numbers right. 64, 32, 64, 32. What's 32 divided by two? That's 16. What's 16 divided by two? That's eight. And now we've got all of these. And I think the char, what is the char? Is that 16 characters, Unicode? And then the Boolean, uh, theoretically it's one, but I think it actually has to take a full byte to allocate it. So um, I think it's actually more like eight. But anyways, um, we're not here to discuss the internals of the JVM. We're here to create a, a handsome looking chart. And when I click run over here, well, a handsome chart is what I get, and it looks pretty darn close to the chart that we were going for. And so there you go. That's how easy it is to create a chart with Java's printf command. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, enterprise programming, Jakarta EE, GitHub, DevOps, microservices, you name it. If you're interested in me, you can always follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ. And yeah, why don't you subscribe on, uh, on YouTube?